and characterization of the sequences have been improved by different high throughput sequencing methods quantitative characterization of transcription vector binding sites the first uh, there are two main approaches the first one is the measurement of binding preferences okay first approach is to measure the frequency of sites along the genome like where in the genome these transcription vector binding sites are present and what percentage of the genome they occupy Binding preferences of the major transcription factors from a top-down perspective are found in this. Okay, and the different binding events and they occur in the genome, these can be captured by the different methods. But the most important thing is that how these, uh, how the change in this event will affect the cell uh, and how the change in this event occurs in the different cell types of the same organism because we know that we have each of our cell have the same genome but have this different expression level so based on that expression level the cells are different from each other so so this this is important to know that okay, I'm not moving with the transitions <laughs> well okay the methods used are for this purpose are chip 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 sec chip x so dna is one hypersensitive side sequencing dna sequencing these methods can be used to assess different in vivo binding events of tfs for their tfs in the genome yeah we can we can assess the different binding events of the different transcription factors to their transcription factor binding sites in the genome I repeat transcription factors are the enzyme which bind to the transcription factor binding sites and these sites are the building blocks of the transcription uh, of the regulatory sequences and their presence in the genome, their occupancy in the genome, their number in the genome, their location in the genome and their binding with the transcription factors is very crucial in controlling the gene expression. Okay. Okay. First one, chip chip. Chromatin immunoprecipitation followed by microarray. The first chip is this one. The first chip is chromatin immunoprecipitation. It is abbreviation of chromatin immunoprecipitation. And the second chip is the chip. It is a slide. Microarray. I hope you know about the microarray. Okay. But <coughs> We, we can find out the different genomic regions genome wide uh, and which bind to this um, certain prote protein of interest in vivo inside the cell the certain protein of interest binds to certain region of interest we can find out that regions by this process it consists of two or different steps first step is immunoprecipitation first we now we have the whole genome and um, there is a protein of interest POI and in this case as we are going and uh, we are doing it for the regulatory sequences this protein of interest is transcription factor so we have to find out the binding so first we will allow the binding of the protein of interest to the to the different sites in the DNA we do not know what are those sites up till now okay so then we have the bound complexes the bound complexes we will isolate them isolation is done by using different antibodies POI protein of interest will bind to that site and we know that we can capture the proteins by antibodies so we will capture protein of interest so protein of interest will have the binding sites bind to them like it will be isolated in complex form and then reversed we will separate these two amplify and denator the second step is to isolate the single standard transcription factor binding sites from the bound complex now we have protein of interest bind to the transcription factor binding sites so we have to isolate the single standard binding site from that protein then after that we will label the single standard uh, single standard tfps with fluorescent dye and treat them with microarray 
fluorescent dye in ca this case is a fluorescent antibody and we will treat them with microarray microarray already have that sequences uh, the non sequences embedded on them along with certain uh, signal producing element single stranded tfp spine to complementary sequences on chip and a signal is produced here look dna microarray are short single stranded sequences spotted on chip that cover the genomic portion of interest i hope you get it look here here is genomic DNA. First, what we have to do, we have genomic DNA, we have to we have a protein of interest. We will allow the cross linkage of these two. Genomic uh, the protein of interest binds to the certain specific site. That certain specific site is actually the transcription factor binding site in this case. If the protein of interest is transcription factor, so it will bind to that one. <coughs> then we'll share the genome. Sharing the genome will lead to double stranded DNA and double stranded DNA segments along with the protein of interest attached to them, these complexes. Now we will capture from this mixture, we, will cap we have to capture only this one complex. So we will do it by protein of interest. This is amino precipitation step. Uh, we will uh, we'll do it by antibodies, different antibodies. So now we have only this one. We are free from the double standard without protein of interest. So we will treat this one with the microarray. Now, what are the microarray? These are the short genomic. Uh, these are the short sequences that covers a um, respective portion of genome of interest. So these will bind. So uh, so we'll uh, before treating this complex to this microarray will have to attach certain signal producing element to these uh, proteins and antibodies. So we'll attach a fluorescent tie, fluorescent tag. That can be a secondary fluorescent antibody. So by treating this when it will have a ties to this one, to the, mic to the sequences on the microarray. So certain position, at what position the protein of interest binds, it will produce a signal.